Hi guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction and welcome to the start of a reading vlog. So in today's video, I am going to be rereading the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Mass. So this video, I will be reading the first three books, Akatar, Akamath, and then Akawar. And this is my favorite fantasy romance series of all time. So I am both very excited and very nervous to jump back into the world of Prithian. So this will contain all of the spoilers. I was gonna try to do like a spoiler free version, but I really just wanna gush about this series. Like I love this series so much. I remember when I first read this, it was during the lockdown and I had never read fantasy romance before and I was just so hooked. I think I stayed up all night finishing Akawar, the last book, Akawar, Wings and Ruin. Um, I just, I couldn't put it down and I had the worst book hangover when I finished this series. I think I actually immediately reread all three books um, and then I got into Crescent City and like stuff like that, but I just, I love this series so much. So I typically, I think I've reread A Court of Mist and Fury and then A Court of Wings of Ruin at least eight or nine times at this point, but I always skip book one. So this will be interesting. I'm very curious to see how I feel about a certain character. Um, I'm just, I'm so excited. So anyway, I'm gonna be rereading all three books. I'll be doing check-ins. Um, I don't think I'm going to read reread A Court of Frost and Starlight, the novella in this vlog, just because we're just gonna pretend that one doesn't exist. But I'm so excited about the first three. So yeah, I will check in with you guys after I have started reading A Court of Thorns and Roses. All right, so I'm about 11 chapters into Avatar, and here are my thoughts so far. So one, I tried the graphic audio. What I feel like people forget to mention is that you really can't listen to it past like 1.5 speed just because of all of the, like the sound effects. So I tried it, I just, I wasn't a fan. I love the original narration, uh, Jennifer Aketa. It's just, it's so nostalgic because that's how I first listened to Avatar. Um, and yeah, so I'm sticking with the original, although I do see the appeal of the story graph. Um, it is really cool. But so far, what has happened is Farah ends up killing the wolf that ends up being a fairy, and she is taken to the spring court where she's starting to realize that uh, Tamlin might actually be like the High Lord. She just caught the surreal, and I'm, I'm liking it. There are some things I completely forgot. One, I totally forgot how big of an ass solution is when we first meet him. Um, he has his reasons, but also, like, he's such a dick. Um, and then we also, I totally forgot about the Children of the Blessed. And from the beginning of this book, they are presented like they are going to be a major character. And I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the only time we see them again is in Akawar, where they die, like, really, really badly. Um, it's just like they're presented as if they're going to be like this big religious like grouping and then I don't think they play a big role. Um, and then also, this has been driving me insane. Why did I think they were called Fae from book one? They're referred to as fairy throughout most of this book so far or what I've read. And I always thought it was like the Fae lands and the high Fae of like the spring court or whatever. And apparently it's fairy. And I don't know why that bugs me, but it does. <laughs> So I'm thinking it might actually change into the next book and they start just saying Fae. I really did not remember that it was fairy. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying this. Tamlin, we'll see. We'll see how I feel. Like as soon as he starts talking, I'm like, I hate you. But that's because I, I read the other two books. So I know what happens. But I also found it interesting that Farah, re or she says something that's like, oh, the high lady of the court, if like that's actually a title. So even in the first book, we're giving hints that like that could be a thing. We're not really giving hints. I just think it's interesting that it's mentioned and Farrah's like, if that's really a thing, because we know later Tamlin's like, oh, that is a made up title. Like there is no high lady. And Rhysand's like, oh yes, there is. And I'm gonna make one. And I just, I love this series. I love this series so much. And I'm just so happy to be rereading it. It's amazing. Like, I don't think any other series compares. So anyway, I'm gonna keep reading book one. We'll see my thoughts on Tamlin and I will check in with you guys a little bit later. All right guys, so this is gonna be like a super short clip, but I just got to the part in A Court of Thorns and Roses where Farah is in Kalamai and she bumps into a stranger and he says, there you are, I've been looking for you. All of the feels, I love this book so much and my favorite character has finally entered 
And I'm just, I'm so excited. Like the rest of this book I already know is amazing. I just, I love this series. I love this series. It's the only series that like gives me butterflies. But yeah, I just, I've reached that part and I'm now excited to continue. And I will check with you guys a little bit later. All right guys, so I am almost done book one. I freaking love this series so much. I think I already said that in my last clip, but I just got to the part where Farah beat the Bidden Guard Worm and now she's about to do her second trial where she can't read and has to like save Lucian. But I forgot how many times Farah refers to Tamlin as like my high lord and like just like praises him and you're like, he does nothing. It's so frustrating. Because like Rhysand is here doing all these things for her and she doesn't realize it. And then you have Tamlin who's just, he does nothing. He does nothing helpful. So anyway, I cannot wait to start Akamap. That is my favorite book of all time. And I already know I am going to freak out when we get to that wedding scene. And I'm so excited. So anyway, I'm going to finish this first book and then I'm going to start the second. All right, so I just finished Akatar and I started A Court of and Fury. So my overall feelings regarding Akatar, there are definitely a lot of hints that Tamlin is an endgame. And I feel like I never pick that up. But like when Tamlin doesn't do anything to help Farah under the mountain and like the one opportunity he has where he could help her, he just, he just kisses her. So I totally see, like, I don't know. I just, I hate Tamlin. Um, and also just the fact that at one point, Farrah thinks that Tamlin is under, like, a spell where he can't speak. And Lucian's like, no, no, he's just, like, acting. And I just feel like Farrah always, like, rationalizes all of Tamlin's, like, terrible actions. But I feel like I'm realizing that more because I already started Akamath. So, few things with A Quarter of Mist and Fury. First, I feel so bad for Farrah. Like, I always forget how much pain she is in. I always think of A Quarter of Mist and Fury as being, like, this beautiful romance. But, like... Vera is going through it in the beginning of this book and she is not being supported at all. And then you have Rhysand who is just trying to help her and he's the only one that's realizing that she's just deteriorating in front of everyone. And I just, I love Rhysand so much. Also the fact that like we know widowing, I saw like this online somewhere, but we know that when you widow, it is completely silent. And the fact that he widows and like creates an entire thunderstorm during this wedding is just, I love him. I love the drama. He's the best. But yeah, I just, I love A Court of Mist and Fury so much. It is just such an amazing book. Um, and also I feel like reading this the second time, like when Farah is talking to Ianthe about her sisters, I'm like, shut up, Farah. You're giving her information she's going to use against you. But it's just, I love this series. I love this series so much. So I can't wait for my husband to read A Court of Mist and Fury. He's currently reading A Court of Thorns and Roses. He's almost finished it. I think he, I don't know how he's gonna feel about the second book, but I'm very curious. But anyway, I am gonna keep reading and just keep enjoying this series and I will check in with you guys a little bit later. All right, so I'm just jumping on here to say, I just got to the part where Tamlin creates the wards and she's locked up again. And my heart just breaks for Farah every single time that happens. I just, how could he do that? He just like doesn't understand her trauma. And I just, I hate him. I hate him so much. I know I always say like, I want him to be redeemed, but like at this particular point, I just, I, I hate him. Worst character ever. But yeah, so now we know all the good stuff is about to happen and I'm very excited. So I'll check in with you guys later. Guys, so my husband is also reading Akatar for the first time and we just filmed a like rapid fire Q and A because he's halfway done the first book. And he just talked about how much he like loves Tamlin and how Tamlin's so great for Farah and he's providing for her. And I just wanted to be like, you are so wrong, but I did not say that. But anyway, I am still reading A Court of Mist and Fury and absolutely loving it. So we're pretty much at the part where Farah is starting to heal. She sees that Rhysand has kept his people safe. His city is prospering under him as like the High Lord. They're not doing tithes and all these other things that like Tamlin's court is doing. And we find out about Azriel's backstory and I always forget how sad his backstory is. And then it's just, I just love the inner circle. I love all of the characters. I love Moore, I love Amran, I love Cassian, I love Azriel. They're all just absolutely amazing. And I love the part where Rhysand makes Farrah go to the Weaver's Cottage 
And she ends up getting the ring and bringing it back to the inner circle. Every saint's just like, but did you die though? Like he does not <laughs> seem remorseful at all about putting her in that situation. And I just, I love them. But anyway, for those of you who don't know, I am a rep for Nava Wix and I just got my Akatar order in. So this is the painting scene from chapter 55. It's absolutely beautiful with that glitter. And then also this one is the High Lord. I love it. It's so pretty. So yeah, if you want to check out Novel Wix Candles, you can use my code HF10 at checkout to save 10% off. And yeah, I will check with you guys after I have read a little bit more. All right, guys, so I'm early to meet up with one of my like childhood friends. I haven't seen her in a while. So I figured now would be a good time to do an update. So I am now at the Starfall scene, which, oh my gosh, it's one of my favorite scenes ever. So absolutely loved it. But also like the under the mountain scene, not under the mountain Amarantha, but Rune City under the mountain. Um, that scene also always kills me because there's just like so much angst and you know Reese and Farah are like starting to fall for each other. I mean, Reese has already fallen for her, but like there's chemistry and yet Farah's kind of fighting it because she just broke up with Tamlin and it's just, it's so good. I just, I love this book so, so much. So anyway, I'm hoping to finish this tonight and then I think I am going to jump right into Aquawar and yeah, I will check in with you guys a little bit later. All right, guys, so I have finished A Court of Mist and Fury. It is still by far my favorite Sarah J. Mass book. Just everything that happens from the under the mountain scene in the Rune City, but then you have the cabin scene with the one bed trope, and I still think it's like the best one bed scene. Just the tension and you just want them to kiss already. And then going into the surreal, catching the surreal, finding out that Resand is actually Farrah's mate, and then chapter 54 and chapter 55, which are both perfection. So I just, I love this book so much and I'm getting ready to talk about it. I'm about to go on the live for the read along and just talk to everybody about both books uh, or the first two books in the series. And I just, I love them so, so much. So it should be really fun. But yeah, I just, there's so much in A Court of Mist and Fury that's just amazing in terms of like Farah healing and then finding out everything that Resand has had to go through. And it's just, it's such a good book. And I just feel like it tackles like some really tough stuff, like really well. And then you have Valaris and there's like so many quotable lines. And I just, I love it. I love it so much. So anyway, I'm going to do this read along at this live show. And then I will check in with you guys after I have read the last book. All right, guys, so this is the final update. I did not do a good job of checking in while I was reading Aquawar, and that is because I read that book in a day and a half. Like, I forgot how much I love the third book in the Akatar series, and I love the second book, A Court of Mist and Fury. Like, that's definitely my favorite, but Aquawar is my second favorite by, like, a small margin. There are so many scenes in Aquawar that are just, like, top tier. When Cassian is saving Farah from Lucian's brother Eris and his other brothers, and it's like, a shadow fell from the sky. No, an Illyrian warrior. That part will always give me goosebumps. I freaking love that part. And then also just the High Lord's meeting scene when Tamlin shows up and is just an ass. I, I love it. I loved it so much. It is one of my favorite scenes. And then of course, like the ending and the battles. I feel like we forget, or I forget, that Sarah J Mass writes battles very well. Just like action and everything. It was just all, I loved it. I also totally forgot about the library monster. Um, don't know how I forgot about that, but I did. So I just, I love 
I love the third book and the series as a whole is just amazing. Something I did notice on my reread, um, so it said that Lucian can, his magic eye can like see through glamours. How is, how did he not notice that Farrah had a tattoo when, in the very beginning of the book when she first goes to the spring court? Cause obviously she had that tattoo glamoured and it's her like high lady tattoo. But I feel like Lucian definitely would have noticed. And also when she's dosed with Fabane, she's not able to like do any magic. So wouldn't that have like showed up? I don't know, that's like a small critique that I noticed that kind of annoyed me. But overall, I just, I love this series with all my heart. It is still my favorite fantasy romance series of all time. And I will be reading A Court of Frost and Starlight and then A Court of Silver Flames uh, in another reading vlog because we have decided to read that during the read along. And I'm gonna, I'll probably update a lot more for that because I don't like Nesta as a character. I remember after I finished A Court of Silver Flames, I liked her a little bit more, but we'll see. I have a lot of issues with that book and I wanna see if I still have them the second time around. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this Akatar reading vlog and I will see you all next week. Bye.